Since 1974, several nations have been acknowledging June 5 as a day to encourage worldwide awareness and stimulate actions to protect what matters most, the environment. That day is today, World Environmental Day. Hi, I'm Theodore Henry. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. On today's show, we share some more with you about World Environmental Day, and we're also still paying tribute to the life of the Most Honorable Edward Siaga. Stay with us. Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four hours of water conservation today. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, June 5. The government and China Harbor Engineering Company, Czech, have signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the Greater Infrastructure Development Program, GIDP. The GIDP is the successor agreement to the soon-to-be-concluded Major Infrastructure Development Program, MIDP. Projects planned under the GIDP include a ring road around the Kingston metropolitan area and extending the Mandela Highway improvement works to the Old Harbor Bay roundabout. It also involves the construction of bypasses and township roads, as well as drainage improvement works across the island. The MOU was signed in China on Friday by Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Pernal Charles Jr. He used the assignment to reiterate government's commitment to improving Jamaica's road infrastructure. The minister was in Macau for the May 30 and 31 10th International Infrastructure Investment and Construction Forum. He was also present for the 5th China Latin American and Caribbean Infrastructure Forum. During his visit, Minister Charles met with the Chairman and President of Czech, as well as representatives from China's Exim Bank and Ministry of Commerce. In Parliament Tuesday, Transport Minister Robert Montague used his sectoral contribution to announce the state's electronic traffic enforcement plans. He said the ministry would be partnering with the Passport Immigration and Citizen Agency, PICA, to stop individuals with outstanding traffic tickets from leaving the island. Minister Montague said offenses such as running the red light or improper lane usage would be recorded on traffic cameras and offenders would receive electronic tickets in the mail. We are leveraging technology to assist in road safety. All of this should have been done already, but these new things take time and the process of approval is long. Minister Montague also revealed that starting September 1, motorists will be encouraged to drive with their lights on during the day to help reduce traffic crashes. The Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority, meanwhile, is to complete an accident and incident investigation facility for the island's airports by March 2020. This is to assess the cause of incidents at airports to prevent them from reoccurring. The drafting and passage of the Civil Aviation Air Transport Regulations is to be completed by 2021 to provide a framework for operations in the civil aviation industry. Mr. Speaker, approximately 2,000 flights pass over Jamaica on a weekly basis and we are responsible for the safety in our skies. A private consortium is to control 34 kilometers of the island's right-of-way and rails through a partnership with the Ministry of Transport and Mining. The company will help in improving the tracks, buy their own engine and coaches, and pay a royalty per passenger for the permit from the Jamaica Railway Corporation, JRC. This service will start in Montpellier to Catadupa as a tourist attraction and eventually go on to Appleton, but we are going to do it in phases. In addition, the stops along the route will have Jamaican businesses, so hairdressers, vendors, craft people, all from the immediate communities, no big chain stores. We want to put life back into these communities so that the shopkeeper, the dressmaker, the fruit vendor, the farmer and the artist 
will be allowed to benefit. Portfolio Minister Robert Montague was speaking during his sectoral presentation in Parliament on Tuesday. He said a train maintenance facility, a railway museum and food court are to be established at Montpellier. Minister Montague also disclosed that a school train service is to begin soon at the Old Harbour to Spanish Town and Spanish Town to Linstead Legs. The train schedule will be synced with that of the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC. The service will get our children off the streets of Spanish Town early and it is safe and reliable. Mr. Speaker, as we improve the roadways, people will buy more cars and eventually the gridlock on the roads will continue. We need to move away from the policies of moving vehicles and get to the place where we prioritize moving people. In other news, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, says there is now a 24-hour turnaround time for receiving child abuse cases, after which the reports are assigned for investigation and intervention. CPFSA CEO Rosalie Gage Gray says this is one of the efficiencies resulting from the 2017 merger of the Child Development Agency and the Office of the Children's Registry. Mrs. Gage Gray says that with investigators and registration officers based at the same location, the agency is able to wrap up cases within three months' time. We are seeing an increase in the cycle time of receiving a report and intervention happening. We also have seen um, where we are using more electronic um, IT services to get the information in Such a timely as. manner. Mm -hmm. So we have a social services software that's Sohima where we are able to track the cases of abuse on the system in a more efficient way. And so we are able to get the information to make um, you know, strategic decisions. Mrs. Gage Gray was speaking Sunday on JIS's current affairs program, Get the Facts. She urged the caregivers to look out for red flags of abuse. The child might become withdrawn, the child might be sad, you know, a child who would normally laugh and have fun is just not wanting to go to play. A child who is withdrawn, a child, probably for a younger child, starting to wet the bed again, mm. things like that would give an indicator that so, indication that something might be wrong. And we ask that you inquire into it and find out. And finally, a traditional nine night will be held for the late former Prime Minister Edward Siaga in the Tivoli Garden Square at 7.30 this evening. Culture Minister Olivia Grange, who made the disclosure, is encouraging persons who are unable to attend the wake on the ninth night since Mr. Siaga's passing to organize their own tributes. She says Mr. Siaga, who spent much of his life promoting and preserving Jamaican culture, would want Jamaicans to take pride in these rituals. Events paying respect to Mr. Siaga, who died on May 28 on his 89th birthday, are ongoing. Condolence books have been opened at several locations, including the Office of the Prime Minister in Kingston and Montego Bay, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Gordon House, and at Jamaica's missions overseas. Schools today also paid their respects to the late former Prime Minister, with students performing a cultural or religious piece during the final hour of the school day. And this morning, Mr. Siaga's body was lying in state at the Jamaica Labour Party headquarters on Belmont Road in Kingston. Jamaicans in Western Jamaica will get their chance to pay their respects at the Montego Bay Civic Center on Friday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The body will then travel to Ocheria, St. Anne, where it will lie in state between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Protect Jamaica, plant your grass. Help us become more resilient to climate change impacts. Protect Jamaica, plant a tree. It improves the island's national biodiversity. Trees may be fruit, ornamental, or timber, but must be native or suitable to the area's natural landscape. Join the Jamaica Million Tree Campaign and help to plant one million trees by June 30, 2019. This is a call to action by the National Environment and Planning Agency. The theme for this year's World Environmental Day is air pollution. It calls for people to do whatever they can to take care of the earth. And since air pollution significantly impacts climate change, we're giving you some ways you can respond to prevent this global threat. Jamaica is getting hotter. Globally, 
annual temperatures are rising, with the last few years being the hottest on record. Scientists call this never-before-seen warming of the Earth climate change. Some argue that humans play a major role in the changing climate. In this video series, you will hear about climate change in Jamaica, why it is happening, and how it is affecting our lives. Scientists say that today, the Earth's climate is changing much more quickly and getting hotter more rapidly because of global warming. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, global warming results from human activities that increase the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This means our everyday habits and the ways in which we live our lives are causing the Earth to warm up. Our cars, farms, factories and homes release carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This contributes to the warming trend being observed in the climate system since 1950. Just imagine for a moment how heat from the sun gets trapped in a greenhouse. In a similar manner, greenhouse gases entering our atmosphere create a blanket around the earth that traps heat coming from the sun. This blanket of gas reduces the amount of heat that escapes back into outer space, causing the Earth's surface to warm up. We call this the greenhouse effect. For example, the crippling traffic in Kingston does more than just annoy travelers. All of these cars release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This is bad for our country. But what does climate change really mean for Jamaica and the Caribbean? Learn more in part two of this video. Hey there, so did you know that plastic bags were introduced to supermarkets in 1977? The production of plastic bags are toxic to the environment as the process involves the use of petroleum, natural gas and other chemicals. 160,000 plastic bags are used globally every second and 5 trillion are produced yearly. Side by side, they can encircle the world seven times. Plastic degrades after 700 years and will only fully degrade in 1,000. This means that all the plastic that has ever been produced has not degraded. It remains toxic even after it breaks down. 13 million metric tons of plastic end up in the ocean every year and at least 800 species worldwide are affected by marine debris of which 80% is plastic and is mistaken for food by turtles, fish and other marine life. Research has shown that fish caught for human consumption contain plastic nanoparticles. An average family will use 60 plastic bags on four visits to the supermarket and only 1 to 3% are recycled worldwide. Play your part in advancing your welfare and that of the earth. Support the ban on plastic. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and get eco-friendly bags for you and your 1877. An important part of our environment is the food that it grows, which we then consume, whether it's in a natural or processed form. But processing the food usually means it contains a lot of ingredients, and it therefore becomes important for us to have a way to know what we are consuming. Here's how to check food labels and why this is important. Your body needs energy, and we call this our daily requirements of calories. And for Jamaican men, it's about 2,100. For Jamaican women, it's about 1,900 calories per day. The calories is just a unit of energy to say how much energy you need to get around your daily activities and so on. If you're more active and you're, you're not in a desk job, then you're going to burn more calories. If you go to work, when you get up in the morning, you sit in a car and you go to work, you sit in, uh, at a desk all day, and then lunchtime come you order and they deliver the food to you and then you eat that and you go back and sit again and then you sit in a, uh, a bus or a car and you go home 
So you're sitting all day, you're not doing much versus somebody who's on the road and they're walking around or they're standing all day like the teachers and nurses and so on. Then you'll realize the difference in how much energy you will need. And so if you are more active, you should be eating a little bit more. But the problem is that everybody is eating as if they're working in sugar cane fields, chopping cane all day. And this is the problem. So we consume more calories than we are burning off. And every day if we keep on consuming calories, you need 3,500 calories to make one pound of fat. One soda, if you look on the serving size for these things, these juices and so on, you'll think that, oh, it's just 110 calories. But how many servings come in that, that container? About three or two and a half. So you can easily drink 300 calories like that. And if you do that five times for the day, that's 1,500 calories. You almost don't need to eat anything else for the rest of the day. So the excess calories come in the body and then the body begins to store them as fat. And then you put on more weight and more weight. You have to watch the pastries and the breads and all of these things that people, even when they're vegetarian, they still have a lot of these little snacks and so on. These things are full of calories. You know that one, one of the, 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 the cream crackers is about 450 calories. Water crackers is about 500. Yeah, nobody don't want to hear. I never want to believe it either. But this is what you get. The, the, the big, the, the pack that you get. And a lot of people eat them with butter, right? So can you imagine how many calories you're putting in your body with one little snack? And you don't talk about the, the, the tea yet with the milk, the condensed milk and the sugar that you have to have that with. All of these things, they add up without you even knowing. The ingredients label will go from the most to the least in a product. So if, it's, if the product is making a claim, look at where that claim is if it is one, two, or three, because if it falls less than that, you're really not getting value for your money, right, in terms of content. The nutrition facts. One of the first things you're going to look at is the, um, the servings per container, and this says 2.5, which means it's two and a half servings in the container. You are not supposed to drink it, you must share it, right? And then you're going to look at your calories. It says 90 calories, but it's 90 calories per serving, and it's 2.5 servings. So it's 2.5 times 90, which comes out to about 225. And then you come down and you look at your sugar, and it's 22 grams of sugar, but it's per serving. So the entire container is 2.5 times 22, which works out to about 55, 56, if my maths is right and there's four grams equal one teaspoon, so you end up with about roughly 14 teaspoons of sugar. And that, that is, you use this template for all the products that have nutritional facts on them. This is 14 teaspoons of sugar, and the American Heart Association recommends that for an adult male, he con you're, you're, you're supposed to consume nine teaspoons of added sugar per day. For an adult female, it is six teaspoons of added sugar per day. And for a child, it's less than six teaspoons per day. And a child here, we're talking about from two to 18 years old. Don't look at a container and judge it by the size alone. You have, it's very important to read the label so you know exactly, and look at it, 220 calories. For parents, we're, we're asking them, you know, to be very mindful of how much sugar they're giving their kids right because it impacts upon their health in the not in the long term we try to provide information to parents and guardians teachers anyone about the alternatives to these sugary drinks because really you don't need them in your diet you can get enough sugar that you need from your the foods that you eat the carbohydrates which are converted to sugars in your body which give you energy so some of the alternatives are of course water it's um it's the best one but there's also fresh fruit juices so blending your own juices without adding sugar and you'll have the natural sugars and fiber from the fruits 
there's coconut water. It should be, um, we should actually drink this in moderation because it does have quite a, a high sugar content, um, but it is a good alternative. For the children, freezing the juices into popsicles or ice cubes so that it's more interesting for them to drink, as well as doing infused water. So infused water is, um, it's a process where you cut up your favorite fruit or vegetable or even mint leaves or aloe. You place it in water overnight so that the, the vitamins, the minerals, all the goodness from the fruits and vegetables are infused into the water and you can have that. It's not sugar sweetened and it gives you the vitamins and minerals that you need throughout the day. And then for children, there's unsweetened milk. So not flavored milks like the chocolate milk, but unsweetened milk doesn't have a high sugar content and it also will give the children the calcium that they need for their growing bodies as well. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Here's a fruit which can be had in various forms and be just as nutritious. Watch closely as we bring to you Pumpkin Something. This is the Stony Hill Development Era Committee Pumpkin Festival. I'm very excited about um, this pumpkin something here happening at, at Go in Golden Spring and we have a, a variety of um, farmers group from um, the West Rural area coming out. We had a festival actually last year, coffee. And what I what they said, what the group said to me when I met with them the last time, the DAC, they mentioned, Miss, we did coffee last year. Let us try something new. There's a lot of pumpkin in the area. This area, West Rural St. Andrew. A lot of farmers are within this community. The man in the CDC is a new entity in our community. We saw the need for some community development and um, we partner with the SDC to form this group. We're one year old. I am very proud of our pumpkin cheesecake. Apart from our pumpkin cheesecake, we have a pumpkin chutney. It's similar to a, a salsa dip. We have our pumpkin pudding, we have a pumpkin bread, we have a pumpkin fruit cake, we have pumpkin chips, we have a pumpkin punch, we have a lot of things on um, offering today. We also have a farmer's market where we're selling pumpkins as you can see and we have food being done on display right now for everybody to enjoy. The pumpkin saltfish fritters, we made a flour from the grounded pumpkin and I think that is the number one seller today. Mount James has on display pumpkin coffee, we have a pumpkin rum cream, we have pumpkin chutney, we have a pumpkin oatmeal cookie with walnut and raisin, we have pumpkin spread, we have pumpkin fruit cake, we have a pumpkin freshener and other products. We have a pumpkin hot sauce. Sony Hill has, uh, we have a pumpkin rock cake, we have a pumpkin punch, we have pumpkin fritters, we have pumpkin cake, we have pumpkin ducuno, and we also have pumpkin pie. And we also have a pumpkin ketchup. SDC is one of the one of the entities that we work with because as a social service officer of the parish, I work with a number of groups to utilize what we grow. You can utilize the pumpkin in another number of ways. You can make your soups, you can make your jams, you can make your cakes, you can make drink, different drinks. Person's talking about going healthy. It is one of the cheaper vegetables that you can utilize to get your nutrients. And in terms of diet, person's talking about um, eating properly now and not consuming the whole cholesterol, the pumpkin fits right in there. I love pumpkin. I mean, pumpkin is 
one of the things we give to babies from their babies that they actually um, they're not squeamish about I love it and so it's not something that people would shy away from so I think it's a good thing to actually use um, in pretty much anything. A lot of Jamaicans love pumpkin soup. One of the aim of this, this activity is to see how we can help communities to generate some sort of income. Help th they have the products in the community. How is it now that they can use this product now as a sort of local economic initiative? And this activity that we are having here today, it falls under our local economic development support program. The food is good. It's exciting. I'm, I'm quite, um, I was impressed really when I saw all the display of the, different, of the various pumpkin, what pumpkin can make. I like the pumpkin juice. I like the different kind of pumpkin treats. The rock cake was good, and now I'm having a pumpkin soup. The first coming to a pumpkin show, it's exciting, it's informative, and it's creative. It's nice being here. Food's good. I had the pumpkin rum down with the salad, and I also had the pumpkin cheesecake. That was really good. I suggest you people to try. It's a fruit. Actually, when I was doing the concept document for this, and somebody asked, is this a fruit or a vegetable? And I went and I did my own research, and it's actually a fruit. It may be a fruit, but we, we use it as a vegetable. We utilize it as a vegetable. So um, how somebody eats, say, a mango, is not how they would utilize a pumpkin. Pumpkin is a fruit. Yes, it's a fruit. It is a fruit. This event would not have been possible without our sponsors, the Social Development Commission, of course, and the, business, the various business places within the development area. The Member of Parliament, Mrs. Juliet Cuthbert Flint, and the Councillor Tosha Shrop. And of course, the eight communities that are represented here today. I applaud SDC for partnering with the farmers in West Rural St. Andrew. And now a look at some of the institutions and businesses created by the Most Honorable Edward Siaga. He established many of the financial institutions needed to build a financial market for successful economic growth and investment including the Jamaica Stock Exchange, the National Development Bank of Jamaica, the Export-Import Bank, more popularly referred to as the Exim Bank, and the first satellite telecommunications data processing operations based in Montego Bay called Digiport. Mr. Siaga was also the architect of a wide range of social programs, including the Golden Age Home for the Elderly, the National School Feeding Program, and the Learning for Earning Activity Program for Street Children. He was also integrally involved in the Student Revolving Loan Fund for Higher Education and the Human Employment and Resource Training Center, more popularly known as HART. He spearheaded the Media Divestment Program, which led to the birth of several small privately owned radio and television stations. He was also the architect of most of the institutions geared to promoting and building cultural awareness, appreciation, and national identity of Jamaican religion, art, craft, national heritage, including the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, JCDC. And this is where we leave you for today. But do join us again tomorrow for what promises to be another informative edition. If you missed anything, you can watch it all again on our website or our YouTube channel. And don't forget to keep up with us via our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. As we observe World Environmental Day, remember we can all do something about the quality of air that we breathe. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Do take care.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.